All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today we're going to be starting the French Revolution. Um, this is a revolution that really, honestly, truly changed um, how the world was, you know, um, because you have to remember that this time in the world, a lot of places had kings and queens and stuff like that. And the, just like, you know, if you want to use nowadays the, um, similarities that you know the very rich have a lot the very poor have basically nothing and then the people in the middle are the ones who are like am i more this way or that way and things like that you know so we're gonna be looking at that okay so let's go to the objectives so we're going to analyze the significance of the rich and churches basically not paying taxes we're gonna see what kind of effect that has um, we're going to examine the, uh, which group owned most, uh, and which group, which group had the most people. And usually you think, Hey, this group has the most people. They would have the most things. That's not always a case. Okay. And the last one, we're going to create an argument on whether the bourgeoisie people are rich or are they just middle-class people? You know, the whole term bougie, you know, it's, um, it's kind of gotten a, different term now as opposed to uh what its true meaning is and that's what we're going to be looking at today okay so here is your warm-up picture the first one's very simple you're analyzing the picture and it's asking you basically what's going on you know just look at the picture see what's who's what what's there and um what's going on what do you think okay the second one is basically you're taking a guess in a sense you know again you're analyzing the picture but do you think things look like it's chaotic like there's no control people are just doing whatever or does it look like there's at least some type of order you know you know going on like there's a government going on and you know things like that so make a prediction based off your analysis of the picture and just you know, based off that, take a guess. What do you think? Do you think things look chaotic? Does it look like, or at least like, hey, there's some type of order going on. There's some type of structure, you know, in, in, a, in a form like a government, you know, type of stuff like that. Okay. So continue to write if you're still writing, but if you um, are done, we are moving on in three, two, one. So here's the thing. Since the days of the Middle Ages, France has always had three status groups. All right. They're called the states. Um, there was a clergy estate, the noble estate, and basically everyone else, which they deemed as um, peasants. You know, that's what they called them. Hey, you're a peasant. So the clergy, um, basically, that's the church. Okay, the church, the priest, people like that, um, they equaled up to about 130,000 people out of 27 million. Okay, 130,000 out of 27 million. Now, why do I keep repeating it? Because here's the thing that 130,000 people owned about 10% of the land in France. 10%, that's one in 10, right? Um, 130,000 is a lot shorter than 1 in 10 to uh, to 27 million. Okay. Now, high clergy, these people basically were noble families. They were cardinals, you know, bishops, head of monasteries, things like that. Um, and the thing is, there was a high and a low. The low... They were more towards the commoners, the peasant people again, the poor, right? Um, they were like <clears throat> on the ground. They were the ones who were at the churches, giving the blessings, hearing the confessions, doing things like that. Whereas the high clergy, <clears throat> they were the people that um, basically told the priest and the friars and all those people below what to do and things like that. Well, they lived very nice, and the other, the lower clergy, they didn't get to live that nice. Uh, nobles. Now, the thing is, nobles, again, you've heard this term before, since, like, the Dark Ages and stuff like that, um, they equaled to about 350,000 people, and they owned 30% of the land. 
So again, um, if you combine the clergy and the nobles, that's about 480 people. That's a little less than half a million people out of 27 million. Only about, you get half a million out of 27 million. And those less than half a mil own 40% of the land. Okay, that's ridiculous. Okay, the nobles, they held high positions in government, of course, military, courts, churches, things like that. Um, they made sure that they were on top. They made sure that their families and their children and, you know, relatives all stayed at a certain level. That they didn't dip down here because that's lower class and we're not there. We're up here. So we're going to maintain that we're up here. You know, as much as possible. Make sure that we are in positions in government and who controls things to make sure that our family and our name stays up here, not down there. Okay. Here's another fun little fact. The clergy and the nobles, they didn't pay tallies. Tallies are what they call taxes. Okay. That's another name for taxes, tallies. Um, so this... Um, uh, picture to the site here really really is a great job and it's it's not that they're doing anything inappropriate okay i've had a lot of students say that you know they're doing something with this guy no it's basically the clergy and the nobles are riding the backs of the poor people the poor people pay for everything you know while the rich and the uh, churches they don't pay for a thing you know, anytime the government try to tell them, hey, you got to pay up something, they, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And again, they are already on top and they've already established themselves. So um, the king, queen could not do anything against them because they controlled it all. They controlled everything. They may have spent years making sure that their families had everything and that they could stay in control. Okay, so yes, they're not doing anything inappropriate. It's just a symbolism of, hey, they're riding the backs of the poor people. Okay. So here's a question that has been raging on for years and years and years. Um, and I just want to know what your take is. Should churches pay taxes? Why not? Why not? Now, if you don't know, uh, when people donate to churches and stuff like that, whether it's on television or at churches themselves, the churches do not pay taxes. Okay. Now, um, the thing is, churches also cannot say, tell their people, vote for this person, vote for that person, because that's one of the rules. If, hey, you don't pay taxes, you can't tell your people who to vote for. But still, some churches kind of suggest, you know, the Lord says that, you know, just, you know, you should vote for this candidate is a good Christian man, you know, what I'm saying, or good Baptist person or wh whatever religion. Okay. But some churches do do that. So my question to you, remember, then they're making millions of dollars. Some preachers are making, if you don't believe me, look up Joel Olstein, uh net worth, and you'll see how much that um, particular um, reverend guy makes a year. Um, so they don't pay taxes. So what do you think? Should they pay or should they not pay? Why or why not? Okay. So continue to write. Uh, but if you are finished, we're moving on in three, two, one. So the third estate, which is, again, the peasants, um, the reason why they were all called peasants, because basically a lot of them were, 80% of them were peasants. Now, the thing is, peasants were not just like poor people who had no education, things like that. They did have an education. They were smart people, They um, and they weren't all dirt poor, okay? They varied in different types of jobs and stuff like that. Um, now, the thing is, the, um, the peasants, the third estate... 80%, remember, the rest, so that half a million, the rest of them basically made up up to about 40% of the land owned, you know. Now, that 40%, that was not, again, the poor. That was basically the middle class people who were considered the third estate. 50% um, of the peasants owned little to no land. Okay, so again, they, it's kind of like... Um, you know, when they say, oh, when you're someone's rich, 
when someone's a millionaire, it's like this is somebody just one million or two million, or is there eight hundred million things that you just put them all together? They're all millionaires, right? Kind of like the same thing with the peasants. You know, if you're not part of the nobles, you're not part of the church, you're in this group. Well, again, like I said, they were some middle class people and they owned about like forty percent of the land, and then half of the peasants didn't own any land. They didn't own anything. Okay. But here is one thing that all peasants did. They all owned duties to nobles. They had a job. They had a way, they have to pay back the nobles in one way or another. You know, father borrowed money, father died. Hey, the kids now take up the debt. You know, things like that. Okay. Um, the peasants had a certain, this is pretty true. Peasants had to work a certain number of days harvesting the nobles' crops in order to use the nobles' equipment and uh, to process their own crops, you know, to use the uh, mills to make flour and stuff like that to make bread, you know. Um, so he's like, kind of like, hey, you're using my tools. You got to come work on my field to do that stuff. Oh, you want to use my windmill? You want to use my little machinery to make whatever you need to make? Fine, but you got to do this stuff for me, you know. So now here's where things start to get pretty bad. Prices started to rise. Okay. Prices started to rise on some things. Now, at first it was very subtle, just, you know, like he gives like a quarter, 50 cents, whatever. Um, but as time went on, it starts to go up and more and more. And as time goes on, as we keep going, you'll see, you hear me talk about the prices rising higher and higher to the point where um, people were unable to buy things. They couldn't because a piece of bread was no longer, or a loaf of bread was no longer like, let's say like right now we have a cup for a couple bucks. No, now it's 50 bucks. It's like, no, I can, no, I'm good. I'm good. I can make my own bread at that price. You know, so it got ridiculous. And um, a lot of people, especially the peasant group, the third, third estate, um, they were left to beg. And sometimes some people even stole. And it costed them their lives. You know, some people were killed trying to steal a certain item. You know, the owner came out and justifiably killed them. You know, hey, you stay stole from me. Um, so it, it was getting pretty bad. Okay. And again, another picture to help you uh, understand how it was the church and the nobles crushing the peasant people. So here's my question to you. If people were forced to choose, okay, remember you're just thinking, just think about how people you know, people you encountered, not just family members, but other people. Um, do you think these people would rather beg or steal to survive? If, again, money's, I mean, basically worthless, you know, uh, they're hungry, they're homeless, things like that. Do you think that they would beg or do you think they would um steal what do you think what do you think most people would do okay um so go ahead answer that question and uh prepare for the next slide which is coming in three two one all right so the thing is i've heard a lot of students over the years use the word bougie and i'm like do you even know what that word means and they're like yeah someone's all rich i think they're all you know, Chingon, they think they're all top dog. And I'm like, not quite. <laughs> so here's the thing. The bourgeoisie, that's how you pronounce it, bourgeoisie, uh, made up about 8% of France, which was 2.3 million people. Um, now, of the population and uh, owned about 25% of the land. Okay, so, again, we're talking about those um, uh, mid middle class people. Again, they that's them, you know, partially them. Um, they were professionals, okay? It sounded like they were nobles and, like, owned land and land and this and that. No, no, they were just, like, lawyers, public officials, doctors, writers, bankers, things like that. You know, people who were, had a job, a good job, um, made, you know, some amount of good money, but nothing to the point of nobles where they'd have to work for it, basically, as long as... This is daddy's money, you know, type of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, now, here's the thing. They were not as bad 
of a financial struggle as the poor, obviously, right? But the thing is, they weren't happy because um, they did not have nowhere near the privileges that the nobles had. Okay, they're like, yeah, we make some good money. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're living, we're not poor. We have houses and stuff like that. We have extra money. We can buy things. But you guys, you top guys, you nobles and you know clergy, you guys are holding us down. You know, we're supposed to be progressing, getting higher. But you guys make sure that it's a, it's a club and you guys are not letting us in at all. And you guys stack the deck so that you win all the time. So here's the thing. Uh, the noble group is like, okay, now these guys are getting a little upset. Uh, if these guys turn, you know, then they're going to tell these other guys and, you know, it's going to be kind of a mess. So what they did is said, okay, some of you bourgeoisie people, you guys can join our group, you know, the nobles. Um, but you can only do it if you basically obtain public office. If the people vote for you to be like a um, mayor, you know, with uh, t councilman, things like that. Now, thing is, I'm sure you're thinking, well, why, why just public office? Because the they're part of the government, and in the government, they can make rules. They can, you know, kind of make sure things are legal. You know, turn a blind eye to this, um, fake this paperwork, things like that. So you, you kind of have to see how the noble people are very corrupt. And they're trying to make th maintain their power, you know, keep everything for themselves, nothing for the people below type of thing, okay? The um, thing is, both nobles and the bourgeois had a problem with this thing called the Enlightenment, all right? Um, the Enlightenment was basically a new way of thinking of, like, what's fair what's what's the purpose of government you know and things like that and they felt that the old laws were unfair you know, again that they favored the old families the rich families you know things like that and that it made basically Louis the 16th corrupt okay now that picture right there that is Louis the 16th yeah you're gonna tell me this guy is like living modestly no the guy's wearing tights for crying out loud and some heels okay <laughs> so here's my question to you um if people are being oppressed while a small small portion of a nation is living large do you think those people who are being held down have a right to fight back and demand more than what they're given what do you think okay so again a lot of people who are poor being taken advantage of can't um, climb up the society ladder, can't climb up financially, things like that. Um, but then there's a small group who controls like basically everything and make sure that the laws and everything favors them. Um, do those people, that large amount of people, do they have a right to fight back and demand more? What do you think? You tell me what you believe. And I'm not, I'm not talking saying, hey, we're going to, you know, march and this and that. I mean, like, literally fight back, you know, attacking and things like that, using violence. What do you think? Okay, so go ahead, start writing if you haven't started writing already. Um, but we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so here's my question to you. Um, the exit ticket question, remember, pick one of these. Uh, should rich people and churches have to pay taxes? Now, again, there's some people say, no, you shouldn't tax churches because, you know, it's a church. It's, uh, it's they're, they're doing good, you know, good work. They're helping out. They donate. You know, people go to them when there's uh, problems, things like that, you know, and that the government shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff, taxing churches, you know. And some people say rich people, you know, a lot of rich people, they have corporations, they have, they create jobs, you know, things like that. And if you tax them that they're going to move their company overseas, they're going to move them over here, things like that, you know, or they'll just close down the shops, you know, their, their businesses. Um, so what do you think? Should rich people and churches have to pay taxes? All right. The second one is basically for you to. Now, that's how you've seen about the bourgeoisie people. 
Uh, should they be considered rich or just middle class? And why? Okay. Now, like I said, a lot of people nowadays, they think they hear the word bougie. Oh, this person bougie. Oh, they are all, you know, all rich and this and that. But just like the notes say, they're not really rich. They're not really rich, you know, at that time. Um, but they are richer than the poor people, but not as rich as the nobles and the old families, you know, things like that, the old money as they call them. So what were you, where would you put them? Would they really be still be considered rich, high rich, low rich, or high middle class, middle class, low middle class? What, what do you think? Will you tell me where would you put them and why? Okay. So once you answer this, this is the end of the lesson. Um, hopefully you learned something new. Uh, the next class, we are going to be diving a little bit deeper. Things are going to start escalating. Um, uh, a little bit next week, but the following week, things are really going to start picking up, okay? Um, and also, don't forget, next week, we are going to have a little Kahoot quiz, okay? So be prepared for that, okay? So good job, and uh, you guys take care, and be safe, all right? I'll see you guys later.